Hello, my name is Don Houston. I'm the technical trainer with Bird Technologies, and as part of my job, I help our customers use Bird products for in-building distributed antenna systems. Increasingly, commercial wireless users and municipalities demand reliable communications inside offices and residential buildings for safety reasons and for business needs. Typically, this requires a distributed antenna system, or DAS. As shown in these photos, a typical in-building DAS consists of three major elements. A bi-directional signal booster to relay and amplify RF signals to and from a remote base station. A network of antennas in the required coverage area, plus signal splitters or directional couplers connected by coax cables between the signal booster and the antennas. The antenna transmitted signals can then be picked up on portable radios for building owners and or safety personnel. Many DAS designers and installers choose the simplest way of connecting antennas to the coax network. As shown in this diagram, they use standard three-port, two-way splitters at every cable and antenna junction. The problem with using splitters is greatly different signal strengths at the antennas, which are a function of the individual coax cable lengths and the resulting line losses. In areas with high line losses, a portable radio user may not receive or transmit an acceptable signal level to or from the remote base station. To maintain satisfactory signal-to-noise ratios in a DAS, the signal loss at any antenna should be limited to no more than 25 to 30 dB. This can be accomplished by using the appropriate four-port directional couplers instead of splitters. An example of one is shown in this image. Using couplers allows a DAS designer to supply a smaller portion of the available signal to a shorter coax branch, but preserve the majority of the RF energy for the longer, higher loss branch. This avoids the need for inline boosters in branches with excessive loss. Using directional couplers in the same system shown earlier achieves more uniform signal levels at the antennas. All the signal levels are within 1 dB of each other, and we don't incur the added cost of an inline booster. Because the loss of 15.8 dB at antenna number 5 is far better than our threshold of 25 to 30 dB. Selecting the appropriate directional coupler is only one step in good DAS design. The other steps are determine building materials and how they affect RF signals, obtain building layout information. Determine owner restrictions on DAS component placements. Antenna selection and area coverage. Select antenna locations and placement of cable runs. Consideration in the use of radiating coax cable. Directional coupler selection for balanced signal coverage. Calculating cumulative losses at the antennas. Using coupler manufacturer specifications. Don't worry if this seems complicated. Bird Technologies offers a wide range of resources to help you design the most effective system for virtually any building. These resources include a two-part white paper on how to properly design an in-building DAS, available for download at our Bird Technologies Group website, birdrf.com. We also offer application engineering services to help you select just the right components for your DAS. You can find more information about our products as well as how to contact us at birdrf.com.